Welcome to Discovery Moto. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on the Moscow Moto Ectotherm heated jacket. This is a pretty new item from Moscow, and I actually haven't seen very many independent reviews out there on the web yet. And so I thought I'd share my thoughts in case uh, they may be helpful to any of you that are considering purchasing this jacket. The idea here is to combine two cold weather riding layers into one. A nice electrical heated jacket for riding in cold weather with a nice sort of puffy down type jacket for when you're off the bike. I should say before I start that I'm kind of a big Moscow Moto fanboy. I, I think all their products are just incredibly well thought out, really well designed. The construction quality is always just bomb proof. I've owned a number of pieces of their luggage over the years. And in fact, you can see one of my favorites here, the uh, Nomad tank bag on the, mic, on the bike behind me. I think the Ectotherm really lives up to their reputation for design and quality. So let's dive right into it. The shell is made out of a um, nice ripstop material, and it feels you know, pretty substantial, pretty rugged. I think it wouldn't easily get torn or snagged or punctured. And um, then it's coated with DWR, which gives it some water resistance. It's not waterproof, um, but the DWR does give it some water resistance, which is nice. The jacket is filled with 100 grams of something called Primaloft Gold, which is, I guess, kind of a new high-tech uh, insulating fill material that optimizes the warm to weight ratio. And then it has six carbon fiber panels uh, that are part of the actual heating system. And these are located in the collar, the chest, the back, and the arms. I really like the carbon fiber. It is very thin, very flexible, completely unobtrusive. So when you're wearing the jacket, you don't feel like it's an electric jacket. It just feels like a normal jacket. Um, it also makes it really easy to compress and stuff into a stuff sack, um, which is nice. So the jacket has 42 watts of output, and it's controlled through this really nice controller here that's sewn into the hem of the jacket. Uh, really easy to control with a gloved hand. You just hold down the single button for two seconds, the jacket will turn on, and then you can cycle through hot, medium, and low heat settings by just clicking one, two, three times. So really simple as can be, really easy to operate. And then the jacket will connect to the bike with a standard five and a half millimeter DC jack. And it comes with the harness that you're going to need to connect the jacket to either the battery or a power distributor unit on your bike, depending on how you have it set up. So I can tell right away that uh, the control system and the heating elements in the jacket come from a third party supplier because they're identical to ones in other jackets I've owned or have researched. And the sales rep at Moscow confirmed this. And I think that's great because it's kind of a specialty item, um, the heated el heating elements. And um, so I think it's great that they bought it from someone that's been doing it for a while that knows what they're doing rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. The jacket comes in two colors. This is the Bering Sea Blue. There's also something called the Lycan Green. I actually prefer the green, but they were completely stocked out. And in fact, even in the blue, this was the last of the large size jackets. Um, speaking of size, they did mention to me that the first batch doesn't run entirely true to size. So you may just want to give them a call, give them your measurements, and I'm sure they'll be happy to um, suggest the correct size for you. In the second batch that's coming in the fall of 2022, um, they feel like they'll resolve that and it'll run a little bit more true to size. But that said, I'm 5'10", 32 inch waist, 41 inch chest, and their sizing guide recommended a large. This is a large and I think it fits pretty well. And what I really like about this jacket is it doesn't look like motorcycle gear. You know, you can go into town or go into a restaurant and look, you know, completely normal. Um, dare I even say stylish. Now the jacket has three pockets, uh, two hand warmers in the sides and a Napoleon style uh, pocket here in the chest. And uh, it's supposed to be, you know, compressed and packed away into one of the pockets. It has a, both an internal and external zipper to allow you to do that. I will say I struggle with that a little bit. I think it's a little hard to get it stuffed in there personally. So I would just suggest carrying um, a simple little stuff sack like this and it'll make your life a lot easier. Finally, uh, I wanted to mention these really nice elasticated thumb loops that the jacket comes with. Um, so when you're riding, you know, it pulls the sleeves and, uh, down to the gloves and seals up that gap so cold air doesn't get in. And that's just, you know, the kind of thoughtful little design elements that uh, Moscow is known for and make this jacket really great. So, you know, it's a really great jacket and it's going back. And the reason for that is whenever I buy a piece of gear is to solve a particular problem. And in this case, what I was trying to do was reduce my pack volume, weight, and layering complexity by combining these two items into a single jacket. Now, this is my hot wired heated jacket. It's an excellent heated layer. It's actually on clearance right now on a bunch of websites for about 150, 160 bucks. And I highly recommend it. 
Um, and it has all the same electrical components as the ectotherm, the same push button switch, the same carbon fiber panels, though with slightly greater coverage. And it also has greater output where the ectotherm comes in at 42 watts. This comes in at 74. The downside of this jacket is that it's completely useless off the bike because it has no thermal insulation whatsoever. And so for that reason, I usually also bring this Rab Microlite hoodie, which is quite warm. And between these two items, I'm able to stay comfortable both on and off the bike, even on the coldest trips. The problem is that these two items together take up quite a bit of space. In fact, if you look at them side by side here, you can see that they take up as much precious pack space as my sleeping bag, my sleeping pad, and my jet boil oven. So really quite a bit of space. And the ectotherm really held the promise of combining these two items into a single awesome jacket that would take up less space, weigh a little bit less, and reduce the uh, number of wardrobe changes that I'd have to make throughout a trip. So then what's the problem? Well, the problem is that when it's not powered, the ectotherm is just not warm enough. Um, where the Rab keeps me comfortable down into sort of the mid-20s, I went for a walk in this jacket in 45 degree weather, and I was already getting kind of chilly. And so I think it's just not going to be able to replace the Rab for very cold camping conditions, for example. And I thought that this might be the case, um, and what gave me some hope was that even though it's not advertised as such on the product page on the Moscow website, on their YouTube channel, they do claim that the jacket can run off of a portable power bank. And actually this was confirmed to me by their sales rep. And so I was excited about this because I ride with not one, but two power banks. I have the uh, Microgravity XP3, which I use as an emergency jump start, And then I have this RAV Power uh, 28,000 milliamp hour high output uh, battery pack that I use to charge my drone and other electronics and things like that. Now, both of these have pretty high output uh, capacities, but they're all five volts and the jacket needs 12 volts. So I bought this step up adapter to go from the five volts in the power banks to 12 volts for the jacket. Um, I plugged it in and while the controller light did turn on, so something was happening, um, the jacket did not get warm. It stayed completely cool to the touch. So that was disappointing. And what I, I think you need is a power bank with a native 12 volt jack. And these do of course exist. So the older, bigger brother of the XP3, the XP1 uh, does have a DC jack on it. And I suspect it would work, but it is quite a bit bulkier and heavier than this. And I just don't think it would be practical to walk around a campsite with something that big and heavy in your pocket. Um, also, you know, it wouldn't, meet my goal of reducing pack volume uh, and weight. And then finally, they're pretty expensive. It's about 130 to 150 bucks for the XP1. And so that would, you know, increase the total cost of the jacket setup by about 50%. Then when we talk about warmth on the bike, my uh, hot wire jacket, you know, as I already talked about, it has twice the output, more panel coverage. Um, so it's just very likely to be warmer for when you're riding cold, very cold weather. Um, now, this jacket does have insulation, which can compensate for some of that difference, but when it's compressed under the weight of your riding gear, I think the insulation layer is not going to be, you know, working at its optimum. And so overall, I think the hot wire jacket is still going to take the win for absolute warmth. That said, I rarely run the hot wire jacket at full blast because it gets quite warm, but there have been times where I've had to do that, you know, riding in very cold temperatures for long periods of time um, on the freeway. And I'd rather have that extra heat than not have it. So in that department, the hot wired wins. Finally, and most importantly, the ectotherm does not offer non-electrical redundancy. If I blow a fuse on the bike or the controller goes out on this jacket, then the unpowered ectotherm is just not going to be warm enough to keep me comfortable um, riding again at freeway speeds and very cold temperatures. If the same thing happens on my uh, hot wire jacket, well, then I'll put on the RAB, and I know for a fact from experience that it will keep me not comfortable, but non-hypothermic, um, even in the coldest riding conditions. And so I get a little bit of that redundancy, and it's really important because, you know, from experience, I know that riding in very cold weather without the appropriate insulation um, can really be very uncomfortable. It could become a safety issue, and it could really end your ride early. So in summary, is the ectotherm an awesome, innovative, well thought out, well built jacket. Yeah, it absolutely is. Is it going to be able to replace my current setup for very cold weather riding? No, I don't think it will. 
I think for more mild conditions, the ectotherm will be perfect. I highly recommend it. But if you want to be able to go out riding in very cold conditions, for example, wintertime in the Mojave, at night it can get very, very cold. Um, I just don't think it'll cut it. And so for that reason, it's going back to Moscow tomorrow. And um, given their current backlog, I'm sure it'll find a happy new home very soon, maybe with one of you watching this video. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please consider liking or subscribing. And I invite you to check out some of the uh, riding documentaries on the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.